Hello my friends and welcome back, it's episode 87. That's the final episode. Do, 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 do. That's not. Got a few to go. I mean, I'm going to go through and carefully decide on the inventory for everyone. Our site is actually leveled up. Okay. First things first. Let's have a quick look at the quartermaster and see if he's got anything worth having. Yes, he does. He's got some 2EC. And some EMP grenades. Oh, a couple of advanced power armors. Which we are undoubtedly going to want. Uh, perks actually for a terrible character. Let's put Steed away for a second and pull out our buddy Stitch. He's leveled up. Shame that he will never fight again. <laughs> I'm almost tempted to give him gain charisma just because all I want him for is his bartering now. I think there is a negotiator here. What we do is we increase the uh, we increase barter first. Oh, actually. You could just tag it. Because tag also gives you 20%. Sweet. See how close I can get this, because I'm going to have to sell a lot of stuff, I think. Obviously, an extra pair of power armors is worth having. Advanced ones. So they offer slightly superior protection. And a little bit more strength. Oh, 
I scored a wicked hit on myself there. Okay, I guess this is as close as I'm going to get. Need them Brotherhood scripts. Carry weight if you've got Mandy. 250, 250, 275, 275, let's go. That can go. I believe these five poisons are needed for the final area to get the good ending. You're supposed to poison the brains instead of uh, killing them. It's what I read. Okay, four flamethrowers, man. Laser pistols. I'm only going to sell as much as I need to sell to get what I want. So. Good old healing powder. I thought it might be useful one day, but it isn't. Or it wasn't, I should say. Now, obviously, this is the point of the game where you could just go out and steal things, of course. Um, you could go out and level up. You can, uh, you know, this is basically the last, the last moment before the last mission. Once you're locked into the last mission, you're, you're, that's it. And I don't know if your vehicle follows along, but I don't think it does. Fifty-one grand he's willing to give me. Right, the power armors and the uh, and the two EC are def. Uh, the yeah, that's worth having, and the EMP shells. Let's take the EMP missiles too. can't quite afford them. Well, I got plenty of standard missiles and they seem pretty effective.
20 grand. I don't think there's anything else worth having. I mean, there's missiles and ammo and stuff, but I've got plenty of all of these things. There's no extra, like, high-grade EMP rifles here. Thanks, Stitch. Now get back in the soup. Okay. So. Let's go for my softest characters to get power armor. Ah, stop moving. So Mandy and Rebecca here are going to have actually plenty of health. Man, he is super strong, even without power armor. In theory, I should probably... Drop this for a standard one for her. Not because he needs more strength, but because he's got less HP than uh, Mandy and Rebecca have been built with Life Giver and have a lot more hit points. Right, let's start with gearing. So, Farsight is obviously going to wield the uh, the Gorse Rifle because there's nothing, there's you know nothing else to do for her. Try and distribute the resource, medical resources evenly. Farsight also is the best small arms skill character I have. So she can have the shotgun for short range. I have to find something else for Steen. Okay. go with some combat meds. This ammo is fantastically light. 400 rounds for just 8 pounds. That leaves her with loads of capacity to carry spare ammunition.
Oh well, it's all robots from here on out, so we'll have the uh, 12 Gorge as a backup. Okay, the last thing we're going to have her do is carry missiles. Because old Steen cannot carry very many. I think we'll go into this mission over encumbered actually. Right. Let's go with uh, 30. These two uh, combat drugs should get us through the last mission. Thirty of these. So two of these. Say so three of these. It's going to be a really long mission, apparently. Let's say that 20 is plenty. Let's stick to his main capability, which is big guns. Right, let's try and keep this thirsty boy fed. I think a lot of characters are going to be carrying additional ammo for this guy. Owing to the sheer weight of it. It's not going to matter too much that we can't run early on. Because we're going to be, undoubtedly, we're going to be busy. Also, combat stims. I can't remember if either of these increase strength, because I mostly selected them because I know they increase agility and perception, which are the main useful combat skills. But anyway.
don't think we're going to have any trouble with energy cells. They are not heavy. One of these and one of these. Say twenty five of these. Okay, seems reasonable. It's so funny that we just basically have to use the whole team to carry Steen's ammo. I'm sure a thousand rounds is absolutely plenty. One of these and one of these. One of these. Three of these. Carry a few more of these without becoming immobile. Yeah. All right, Captain Happy Sniper himself. just stick to the sniper rifle and we just never take it away. Uh, does this use small energy cells? Yeah. I was thinking of a short range weapon for him but probably not worth You know, he probably doesn't need Mentats to increase his uh, perception, let's be honest here. Okay, plenty of healing goodies for him. Carry some more missiles for our friend. Do me a favor and 
carry some 50 cal for this guy. Right. Finally, right, let's take all the um, story items. I can't see us needing the cash for any reason, but I'll just take it because it doesn't weigh anything. Okay, take our advanced lockpicks kit. I don't think we're going to be poisoned by anything. I can't think of no. Robots don't poison you, so. Right, we're going to need these poisons for story reasons. Suppose you could take a plasma rifle for short range work. Now that I think about it. The old plasma rifle is actually uh, a little bit better for short range. I won't give him one for now. I won't give Dylan one for now. He really is more of a sniper than anything else. Okay, so that just leaves room for doctor's bags. Obviously take these, they don't weigh anything. Obviously take our stims, since they don't weigh anything either. Our electric lock pick. Not that we've ever needed to use one. I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else we are going to require. Oh, it's not quite it. Of course, we need our doctor's bags. We can just spam use these. No need to hold back for the final mission. I didn't mind being encumbered. I shouldn't be immobile. It just says encumbered, so why am I immobile the moment I get out? My weight is changing. It's not counting the weight of the weapon. While I'm uh, in the vehicle.
Okay, there we go. Let's go and get that final mission briefing. This is it, brother. The final push. Your squad's actions will dictate not only the future of the Brotherhood, but of the very wasteland itself. From here on out, you will have to scavenge supplies on your own. If you do set foot in this bunker again, it will be because the calculator is no more. Our technicians have secured our nuclear warhead to a vehicle for transport, which will be waiting for you on site. This warhead will be needed to crack an entrance into Vault Zero. I know it sounds like overkill, but that vault is designed to take several direct nuclear hits, and our only hope is that a precise nuclear blast directed on the door will do the job. We expect the entrance to be heavily protected, so make sure that your squad is ready for some heavy action. You must ensure that the warhead stays safe until detonated. The calculator will not give us such an opportunity again. Once you activate the bomb, you should immediately seek worthy shelter. Duck and cover isn't going to cut it this time. Power armor should help to further aid your survival within the bunker. Remember, you will practically be at ground zero of the resulting nuclear explosion. Be sure to take your anti-radiation medication. It was an honor to work with you, brother. It was an honor to work with you, but not an honor to play this game. For sure. Right. You know, obviously, you could spend a lot of time leveling up before going off to this last mission. There's plenty of ammo and supplies to probably gain a good two or three levels for everybody. But, uh,. Yeah, I'm just not that interested in doing that. In the paranoid times leading up to the war, new vaults were being constructed every day. The ancient temples of war known as Norad became the home for Vault Zero, a storage place for the cryogenically frozen geniuses of the time. The calculator was built to be a mixture of machine and man, a gestalt of mechanical switches and human brains linked through a cybernetic interface. Supposedly, representing the ideal society, these brains were to govern the higher functions of the calculator, powering its neural network. The calculator was designed to oversee the repopulation of the continent in the event of a war and educate the new humanity in the ways of the old world. But first, it was to sterilize the land, making a fresh start for the soon-to-be-emerging citizens of Neo-America. For this task, the calculator had at its disposal an army of emergency pacification robots that were designed to survive the Holocaust and surface from the ashes immediately after to begin their task. But a mechanical malfunction left the calculator damaged during the years since the bombs dropped. Mankind had to find its own ways in the darkness of the post-apocalypse. Only now is the calculator activating its robots and embarking on its mission of mass genocide. Because of hardwired programming, it is unable to adapt to the world that has arisen while it slumbered. The calculator will not listen to pleas or threats. It cannot be bargained with. It must be stopped. It must be stopped! We have calculated that it is a bad time. Oh, I've just walked into a special encounter, I see. Oh, this is one of the encounters that you're supposed to get very early on in the game if you're trying to cheese the game. 
If you find the poison, you can actually use the poison on these guys to get Vindicators and a lot of ammo. Um... Yeah, not cool. But yeah, if you poison you can poison them both. And then when they die, they've got like vindicators and thousands of rounds of ammunition. So you can basically build a heavy weapons guy right from the start if you want. Although I'm not sure why you would, because robots are, uh, you know, ridiculously resistant to uh, to vindicator vindic vindicator rounds, as we have learnt. Unless you've sort of built your character for criticals. Okay, that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Join me next time when we will start the final set of missions.